touched anything, so. <laughs> We're past 30 seconds. Cool. Cool beans. We're rolling. Welcome to Popcorn on the Macabre, folks. This is Dick. I'm Chad. And uh, we're about to go for a ride. I think we say that for just about every road movie we watch. <laughs> but uh, we're about to watch a nineteen a movie from 1971 called Duel. Dun, dun, dun. And you haven't seen this. No, I, this will be, I'm, I'm virgin eyes on this one. Yeah, this is, um, but you've seen Jaws. What right? kind of question is that? I know, that was a retarded question. <laughs> um, but uh, it, this is a lot like Jaws. That's what I've heard. Yeah, he did this right... I, he may have done this one first. Okay. Because um, he did the Sugarland Express, which I believe... Okay, they they call the Sugarland Express Spielberg's first movie, but it really wasn't. because like I guess it was like his first real theatrical Theatrical? yeah because he was doing tv right right see and they consider this a tv movie because it officially was but then as you read earlier it was uh they they well received and yeah and they they went to reshoots yeah expanded it into feature length because i think the original runtime was maybe you know whatever the fuck tv movies were i mean it was like close to an hour maybe and then you know they added some shit but uh if you guys have the dvd of this uh, even if you have the Blu-ray, I believe it plays the same. We're on this motherfucking setup menu, and I hope you're excited to watch this, dude, because, you know, I love this movie, and, and to me it holds a special place in my heart because it is a lot like Jaws, but it, there's no shark. It's just a fucking truck. Like, I mean, but it, it is kind of the same. It has that same menacing quality, you know. Where How, you, when was Jaws after this? Just Jaws, a couple, couple years? Like few years? four years? Yeah. So... It, it, it's you know it has that same quality like you know how you, when you watch Jaws you kind of get the sense like it's always foreboding like you get the sense that Jaws is always there like you hear the music this this movie's kind of uh, similar when like you you're, even when the truck's not around you get a sense that like the truck could just be up this dude's ass at any time turn a corner or something yeah. there it is yeah but uh, you'll see a lot of sim. I'm just gonna play this bitch because I'm yeah, sure. Go on, yeah, yeah, go ahead and play. Yeah, we can just talk. You can run it. your mouth a while <laughs> uh, the, over the credits. Playing. Yeah, that's yeah, that's what we're here for. We're gonna run our mouths the whole time. So uh, if you guys have the movie, we're gonna play this motherfucker in three, two, one, and now. How many people do you think have this movie? Sadly, probably not a lot, but they should because it's part of the Spielberg collection. You know, so I guess yeah. It, Spielberg's kind of famous, and people could go back and look for his older titles. Yeah, if you care enough about his early shit. Like, to me, you're not a true Spielberg fan if you don't go back and watch his early stuff. Like, uh, you know, the one with Goldie Hawn I was just talking about uh, that eludes me now. But also, he did this TV, uh, this other TV movie called Something Evil, which is like a straight-up horror movie. Like, if you ever get a chance to watch that one, you totally should. Could I even find it? Probably not. <laughs> okay, so I don't even have the chance. Right. Oh, Pretty hard old. to hunt down. You might be able to find it on YouTube, but that's an old Universal. Yeah, that's the classic Universal logo right there. The one that we actually see at the beginning of Jaws too. But here we are with uh, David Mann, played by Dennis Weaver. We, we not seeing him yet, but this it's, is, it's like a car POV. Yeah, it's pretty cool because, I mean, you're going to notice throughout this whole movie. There's a lot of uh, creative shots that Spielberg employed. Well, he was young, wasn't he? Yeah. Oh, he Young, was had all that shit kind of firing off. Young, dumb, full of cum. And wasn't he, he's probably trying to get into movies right now, right? He yeah. probably didn't like staying in TV. He kind of like, yeah, he kind of like eked his way in there, you know? Yeah, well, I read this was, a, who is it, Richard, who wrote the short story? Richard Matheson. The, the, the short story was written by Richard Matheson. Right. And then also the screenplay. Yeah, uh, I had heard that uh, he found out about it through his secretary or something, handed him Playboy, and it was in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then he contacted, he found out who the TV rights were actually making a TV, and he contacted the dude and ended up getting it. Yeah, and Richard Matheson, to me, like, he's one of my favorite authors. Like, I mean, we're talking about the dude who wrote The Last Man on Earth. You know, he wrote so many fucking episodes of The Twilight Zone. 
Um, you know, Richard Matheson has, he's had his name on a bunch of shit. Fucking, uh, Stir of Echoes. Oh, well. Yeah. For some reason, when I hear the name Richard Matheson, I think of Walter Mathau. No. I don't know why. <laughs> don't fucking bring him into this. I don't know why, though. <laughs> like, every time you say that, well, that's who I see in my head. Mathau, Matheson. That Maybe, could, okay. There yeah. could be a little similarity there, but. Anybody, uh, break out stars from this? No. Um. Not at all. This is a really long introduction with the drive and POV. Isn't it? <laughs> it is, but see, this was back in the day when they had like really long-winded opening credit sequences, which I don't mind, but I can see it being problematic for the the uh, the, o- the ADD people nowadays. You know, yeah, I'm just surprised that we haven't seen anything yet. Yeah, like now, or met a character. We haven't even seen a character. Not yet. Yeah, it's kind of a slow build-up. Like, yeah, we haven't even seen Dennis Weaver yet. We're just watching, I guess, his ride to work, or just his ride. Well, he's he's on a cross country trip. He's on like a business trip, yeah. Director of photography, that Jack guy was anything ever. Did he, um, not that I know of. We'd have to look him up because I wonder if they're all like TV people. Probably, I bet this was. Yeah, I bet this was just a strictly a TV movie crew. But you, you, you're going to see a lot of similarities in this movie uh, to The Hitcher. Like we were talking about earlier, how it's a lot like The Hitcher. and Or is The Hitcher a lot like this? The, yeah, I stand corrected, yeah. Um, oh, that's neat. What's they that? don't do that anymore. What's that? Just how they put the Technicolor shit. Oh, yeah, and, and the that. copyright and all that. At, yeah. the, at the beginning. Old school credits. Yeah. Anyways, what were you saying? The Hitcher? Yeah, uh, The Hitcher is a lot like this. Um, and... Even really, just any road thriller movie seems like uh, they kind of tip their hat to this movie. And one of the things I like about it is that it's uh, it's real, almost kind of you know plays with supernatural ideas. Not like, not literally supernatural. I mean, we we do know. It's yeah, just... don't don't give my mind <laughs> banging different ways, yeah, man. Yeah. You really confuse me on these movies sometimes. Yeah, but. but... I just wanted to kind of <laughs> correct myself there because I didn't want you going down that road thinking too deeply about this movie. <laughs> yeah, you're going to get me thinking like some pet cemetery shit and yeah, totally no. ruin the movie for me. Uh, and, it, and it would. It would. It, oh, that looks like a painting. Because you'd be expecting supernatural. Or I'll just start seeing things supernatural. Exactly. But don't look too deep into it. Just uh, kind of think thematically. Um, you mean don't think that this is a... Uh, fuck, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with that. Well, I'll say symbolically... Uh, the truck is supposed to be like a monster, even though we know a dude is clearly driving it. But you never see the driver. I was about to ask, do we, even at the end? Never see him. You never see him. But now we're seeing Dennis goddamn Weaver here wearing some cool And he was a star. He was a TV star, yeah. My, my mom kind of uh, told me that she used to have a crush on this dude back when he was on Gunsmoke. Dude, those glasses really hug his face. Yeah, I know. Our like, glasses don't do that. Uh, uh, do you ever remember glasses curving to the face? No. And, like, he kind of looks like a dork to us, but, like, I bet this was smooth back in that day. You know, like... Oh, like, yeah, that's pure, like, fucking Death Wish sexy. <laughs> yeah, well, whatever that means. Uh, what? <laughs> I, I kind of like that term. <laughs> Death Wish sexy? Is, uh, you know... So, what, you, mean, you mean, like, no, he's definitely not Charles Bronson. But wasn't Charles you're trying Bronson to considered a sex magnet? Yes, he was. Well, just look at the mustache and the fucking hair. But see, did, Burt Reynolds sexy, maybe. Like. <laughs> yeah, he well, he does kind of have a Burt Reynolds thing because of the mustache. But like, uh, but Dennis Weaver kind of plays a Nancy in this movie. Hmm. Um, to put it lightly, he's kind of a puss boy. Like, and the whole idea is this his truck? Yeah, is, this, we the, meet in the truck for yeah, the first time. This is the one. Yeah. See, now if this movie were made nowadays, it would just open up with this scene. Probably, yeah. Well, to be to, to be completely honest, I understand the driving scene. Uh-huh. I get it, but it was a little long. But maybe for the credits, they had a lot of credits. But wow, yeah. this reminds me a lot of the Jeepers Creepers. Yeah, and see, Jeepers Creepers owes a, a big debt to this movie too. That's a, a, coming up behind that thing. That's immediately what I thought, and then it's spinning around to see the front of that truck. Yeah, it's got a, a Jeepers Creepers feel, but you know they totally ripped this off and it's like the first third of jeepers creepers remember how yeah. like the first third of it is like yeah. pretty much this movie but um what was it i read i was telling you this driver has self-esteem issues and sees the yeah. car some dude wrote that that was a synopsis 
how do you get that that truck has the driver of that has self esteem issues? By the way, it looks the, to me the truck driver doesn't have self esteem issues, uh, but this guy does. If if you really want to look, look that like, that far into it, that. see, because the whole thing about me saying he was a Nancy mm-hmm. is like he he kind of feels uh, defeated or deflated, I should say. His balls feel completely deflated by his wife. Uh, okay, I haven't got into that yet. Which we, we, yeah, we, 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 haven't, we haven't seen it yet. But the truck is kind of a symbol of masculinity. And it's mm-hmm. sort of like... I see it. It's big. Yeah. And Girthy. It's, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's kind of, uh, it's kind of like a, just a big hard cock. <laughs> I mean, but he... Uh, Dennis Weaver pretty much is... Uh, it's testing his manhood. You know, and also his name is David Mann, so he's got to live up to that name. <laughs> he's got to live up to the man. Are you texting somebody over there? I'm telling them not to text. Yeah, me. not during duel. <laughs> yeah, I'll smash their face in. Yeah. But yeah, I had to turn that off. <laughs> Hope yours is off. Oh, well, I don't think so. But anybody I know, I've told them not to bother me while I'm watching duel. But see, this is kind of like a cat and mouse thing they've got going on here. And, uh, it, you know what's crazy? What's kind of scary is that this shit starts out really playfully. Uh, really? You would consider a, a cat and mouse of passing and go, I would already start to get a little anxious. Yeah. Like if I, you know. Yeah, well, it is kind of anxiety inducing for this guy. But at the same time, he's kind of just treating it like, like he would any other normal road rage you know incident like you don't expect somebody to fucking come after you right you know flipping them off and saying like yeah get off my ass charlie i wonder what the radio is talking about right now it's interesting because i was actually going to turn on subtitles for you because uh the radio is saying some shit that's actually that actually ties in with the the, the psychology of the character Mm -hmm. it's almost like it's uh not narrating the story but but Giving, it, maybe foreshadowing or kind is that of, the right word kind of um, tying into everything that, that kind of epitomizes him is his yeah the character it's it's pretty much giving you the character background yeah and I don't remember what it what it is exactly but oh well yeah we missed it oh uh, but there this oh, would be awkward yeah this would be so awkward you know you've been fucking with somebody and then yeah. they pull up to take the same gas and you know, from what I remember, there's not a lot of music in this movie. I mean, I think it kind of like the music kicks in later, but uh, there's no like ominous music. Kind of like like if this were Jaws, you'd hear the derner, you know. Yeah, well, I was wondering about that. Like if they, you were talking, I guess, and I started thinking of <laughs> like if they added a theme to the truck. You know, in Jaws, you kind of got that feeling that the. Yeah. shark was around even yeah. though he wasn't there which I'm but actually kind of glad they didn't do that with this because if they did it almost seems like it would have cheesed it up a little bit because right and in Jaws you know when he's actually going to show up because they always play the music yeah if they're not playing the music you're okay yeah which adds an element of suspense because I mean first you're talking about John Williams who's a brilliant composer but this right here it works without music because you're just trying to figure out what the fuck is going on and we're not even really sure that this truck is as dangerous as, you know, it appears to be. I'd be so pissed that that guy poured gas all over my car. <laughs> yeah. Dude just straight up put gas on the car. Does that come into play later? No. The the gas? Yeah. No. I to call. The, <laughs> the car w- caught on fire or some bullshit. Well, that'd be cool. Now, one thing that does come back into play later. The, the, oh, yeah. This right here where he talks about the radiator hose. Oh, yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah. it's gonna blow. Yeah, he's gonna put this car to the fucking. Well, see, he, yeah, he puts it off. Yeah. Oh, and see, he just said a line there. That Don't he said... all actors say lines in movies? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Touche. But okay, what? <laughs> what were you saying? Well, what did he say? He said, "Not in my house. I'm not like." I... Pretty much, it was alluding to that. Uh, that thing we were talking about where he's he doesn't feel like he's the he's man not of, the man of the house yeah well that was cool we just got a a truck horn sound in our right ear i also think that that you know he's like hello motherfucker i'm right here <laughs> yeah 
See, yeah, this phone call with his wife, he's just like, you can tell, like, he's just like, she just completely runs over him. Do they, I mean, I guess I'll find out. Do they have problems or something? What, do you know why she doesn't really dig him? Look, look at this flood, dude. I'm sorry. It is flooding like a son of a bitch. What are you talking about, dude? That right there? <laughs> That's like, you know, chicks raising their skirts to try to get a road on the mm-hmm. streets. Like, he was, like, putting that shit up there to get the chicks. Didn't you say this, dude? Like, that's how he did all he had to hike and show a little bit of ankle. And <laughs> that lady right there is, like, fucking having to put her panties in there to dry them off. Yeah. Now, this shot right here, I always thought this was interesting because Spielberg, like, was experimenting so much in this movie. I thought it was cool how there was stuff going on in the foreground. And you're trying to pay attention to to David Mann in the background. It's like some fucking uh, some new wave European shit, you know, the way they filmed it, or the way Spielberg filmed it. You know, I wouldn't even think of something like that. <laughs> I would think that that just looked cool. Yeah. Shot, you know, or that's just what's happening in the yeah. So what happened last night? Did he was he not able to perform? <laughs> he's like, um, I'm sorry for last night. And he's like, she's like, I don't want to talk. So I guess we really don't know. He got. If, I think what happened is he got into it. Or do we find out more later? There was a dude flirting with his wife or something. Okay. And, and yeah, he got belligerent at a party. And she's like, you know, you should have said something to the guy. And he's like, well, what should I have done? I challenged him to a fist fight? I don't know what you want me to do. He's a cuck. That's that's why he didn't say anything. Basically, yes. But I was, I was thinking about how bad he was flooding earlier. Didn't you say you flooded... That, like that a long I, time ago like yeah <laughs> used to wear like really short pants yeah my yeah i couldn't dress in junior high or <laughs> high school my parents like my they wouldn't let me pick my clothes and yeah man yeah I, yeah that's why i bought jinkos when i finally could <laughs> yeah and i like, just went way too big because i was traumatized i mean i say i like cartoons and she buys me shirts that have kermit the frog and fucking all <laughs> kinds of shit i think i yeah i had a holographic Kermit the Frog shirt with a flag on it and it, it said Kermit Klein <laughs> while wearing like some Garfield silk boxers. And this was like well into junior high? Well into 11th grade. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I wasn't like, they were like, we're buying your clothes, so you know. Yeah. To a certain extent, like they didn't like me going off into that genre or alternative. Because I would say I started, I wanted to be alternative and stuff like that, but it was like, no, not they, under. They not to... while we're buying your, you know, and you're still our kid. And it was like, but mom, quit buying me fucking cartoon shirts. I don't need fucking Garfield <laughs> yeah. on my shirt. I'm in. It's 1998. Yeah. And she's like, but you like cartoons. You told me you like cartoons. <laughs> yeah, well. She was trying to keep you in the kitty clothes. Th- that and the fucking yeah. I wore capris before they were a thing. <laughs> yeah. And it wasn't just the socks that were showing. It was like shin and everything. Yeah, sometimes maybe my dickhead. Wait, who am I kidding? <laughs> uh, but oh, anyway, so, shit. Here comes the truck. Dude, he's coming up with some force. Yeah, and what's crazy is that, like, supposedly this truck wasn't even going that fast either. Um, but the way Spielberg filmed it, um, I, I don't know exactly what he did technique-wise to get that look, but, like... The truck was only going supposedly like thirty or forty miles an hour. But it was the it was probably had to do a little bit of the depth. It was also on an incline of a hill. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. could that could have been it. And that, that car is going fast. Yeah. Yep. Lens choice, composition, angle, everything, man. And yeah, this is pretty much when like he knows this truck's not going to get the fuck out of his life. I would totally just like slow down. <laughs> I'd be like, man, you're causing me anxiety on my trip all the way through. I'm just going to pull. I'm just going to relax off the gas and let you go. Yeah. Can you imagine having to drive a, a long distance and you're having a road rage battle with somebody that's going in the same direction? Dude, I, I don't know if I can handle it. I mean, I've had road rage before. And you, especially when people don't like merge together. And like like they try to drive on the shoulder or wait till last minute to merge. Yeah, you know that game of dude, cat and mouse back and forth. Can you imagine that, dude? I on used a long to, road, I used to get road rage bad. I think I've calmed down a little bit these days. But like, yeah, this shit right here, like what this guy's doing, dude. If I was in my twenties and I was behind that dude, I'd have fucking pulled a gun. 
<laughs> like, I mean, dude, I would have been so fucking pissed. Like, I wasn't a penny boy like like David here. I, I was really fucking, like, I had road rage so bad that I was the kind of guy that would, like, pull over and fucking get out and approach people, not even worrying about the fact that I could get shot. Well, we didn't think of that stuff in that, like, we back then. No, we were all balls. We were just all balls and guts. And, you know, now we actually think about that shit, the consequences of just getting into a simple road rage incident. I mean, see, like, what he's saying right now, I'm in no mood to play games. I was never in the mood to play games when, when I was on the freeway. There's something about... But when you start a road rage incident, you are playing a game. Or at yeah. least me, because I'll try to pass and get in front, put yeah. on the brake. It's totally a fucking game. It's it, an ego game. You're just trying to see who's got the, the bigger schlong. It's like a game of chicken. That's exactly what it is. And see, he really starts like, you know... And that guy knows who he is. He doesn't know who that guy is, because that guy saw him, you know... Well, neither one of them know who they who they are right okay as an audience member we didn't actually see the truck driver see him but come on he's up he has the mirror they were at the same gas station the truck driver was out walking kicking his things yeah yeah he saw who that is who he is no he doesn't know who that truck driver is he didn't see him he doesn't but the truck driver knows what he looks like is what I'm saying okay so like you know the truck driver knows oh this this dude is a puss or could be you know if he wanted to look and judge he's pretty much got his number yeah, he's like, this dude is a complete fucking Nancy, and I'm just going to... Because he tried. He tried to look, and he couldn't. He was too far up, and he just saw the arm. Yeah. Yeah, and see, like, what's happening here? This is, like, just foreplay, you know? Well, he's just making... The truck driver, yeah, is pretty much making this guy's... He's probably going a little slow, and when he tries to pass, he sweeps, so he can't let him pass, so it's like, this guy's on that clock you know to get there and now his whole schedule is getting fucked up yeah and it's I, it may have already happened uh or it may be coming up he's about to like wave him on he yes yeah he did and then but yeah he does it again and he thinks it's okay and he, he pretty much like almost gets into a head-on collision with another car so like right now i, th- I think he still thinks it's always a fucking, like shots like that yeah where where the camera's like mounted on the hood. Yeah, but like, it, yeah, it's it's hard to explain. But they don't they don't always put the camera there. They don't always look the same. I think Tarantino may have done it pretty decently yeah. in Hollywood, but I'm not sure. It's a good way to kind of stabilize the shot if you want the camera attached to the car. Kind of, yeah, and it, it just kind of, like how the car was moving or the background was moving, but the car was kind of stationary. It's like when they put a GoPro on the head of a guitar. Yeah. And, the guitar in the footage seems stable, yeah, but the things around it aren't. Yeah, well, it's the same effect too. But like when they attach a camera to somebody, and you see like those, um, you know, somebody's at a party and they're drunk, and they'll attach the camera to them like a harness, and you'll mm. kind of yeah. gives gives it that weird, I guess, staccato feeling mother, or a mother feeling, like in mother. It's yeah, exactly. Well, that's what uh, uh, Aronofsky did in Mother. Was attached to the camera to what's her name? What's yeah, her and fuck? he does that yeah. quite a bit, doesn't he? Didn't he do it in Requiem? He did. Yeah, that's kind of it's like one of his go-to tricks. But I guess you know what I'm also getting at with the car camera. They it's also the angle. Sometimes there's like these cool angles that people don't get normally. Nowadays it's kind of centered, isn't it? When you say on the hood, so you just get the glass shot of them driving down yeah, the yeah. road. Yeah, it's a yeah, it's like pretty standard shots. Mm-hmm. Like Spielberg was really I know I've said it before, but he was really experimenting. Can you say it again. He was really experimenting in this movie, and I'll probably say it three or four more times. But, I mean... Was he experimenting with a man? Yeah. Oh, yeah. (laughs) He was. Um, But he was... uh, Dude, that was so bad. I apologize. (laughs) Yeah, that was a pretty cheesy joke, but I wanted to uh, indulge you (laughs) by laughing at it. But, but yeah, like, he... What's crazy to me is that he shot this movie in, like, 16 days, and... He got so much fucking coverage. It's like, dude, how did you do that? Yeah, dude, I, setting up cameras. And, and a lot of them were one shots from what I heard. <laughs> yeah, it, it's like... Uh, yeah, you're talking about uh, what you read earlier about the, the... Yeah, a lot of the chase scenes. He just put a bunch of cameras on the side of the road and they ran up and down the road for like a single shot. Yeah. But was, he had like seven cameras. Also, I think for the 
final scene of here. Yeah. They had one time, so they set up Samra. Samra. <laughs> Samra. That's seven and it, camera. It would be easier when you had multiple cameras. Think about doing this shit, though, if you just had like one or two cameras. cameras? Yeah. Oh, yeah. it would have to be a one or one, probably take. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, I mean, he definitely wouldn't have been able to finish it. But even it. then, you have to be a visionary to kind of know where you're going to put the camera so you could edit it. You yeah. Know, you look. Well, because you know the scene. Yeah, you know with this being like a TV movie, that he didn't really have time. I mean, I'm sure he storyboarded this movie, but like, but think even, about it. Like, he he probably didn't have enough time for. Uh, I don't think he story. There was something when I was looking up this. There was something about the storyboard, but I I quit reading about this. <laughs> it started like low in the bowl. Yeah. Well, it it's like I, I don't know how much that. preparation time he had for this movie. Yeah, yeah it said. It, Said at first he had like four hundred thousand, I think, and ten days to do it, and then it stretched to the the budget was four four hundred thousand. Yeah, yeah. Now don't, I mean, I guess I said it, but I am reading that off the internet, so. Yeah, it was like yeah four to four fifty. Um, any which way, just think of the ten days when I read he had ten days to do it. That gave me anxiety. Yeah, dude, I wouldn't be able to do that shit. But I, I'd be lucky if I got one sequence could you, shot. Could in you 10 though? Days. Uh, I can see what he did there. He yeah. sped the footage up. Yeah. Um, but there's, could there's you, though, think about what you're dealing with here for a movie. A car, a truck chasing a car. How many other scenes are there? You had a short scene there at a gas station, but how many other scenes are we outside of not being with no yeah. cars? See, yeah, it'd be hard because there's not a lot of dialogue scenes. And most of this shit is all stunts and just like, it's just footage of, of cars, you know, a car running from a truck. And it's not even the same angles. Like, he gets all these crazy angles. Like, when I say coverage, I mean just, like, he's getting, like, the car POV. Mm -hmm. He'll get, like, a side view. He'll get, like, a bird's eye view. And then, you know, some of these shots will be on sticks. Some of them will be from a fucking crane, probably, or or attached to another car. You know, tractor trailer, for all we know. But, like, it's just insane how much. I mean, I, I guess that's why Spielberg is who he is. Because, I mean, look how he pulled off Jaws. I mean, that was a technical feat. Of editing. from <laughs> That's how well, I yeah, see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you know, I know what you mean. But the editor the editor wouldn't have been able to assemble the footage that she had had it not been for, you know, what Spielberg shot. But isn't that what women normally say about guy filmmakers, though? I know Patton, Patton Oswalt had a good joke about that. He actually... Oh, this is the first time we hear the creepy music. But Patton Oswalt had a good joke about... That's really lame, creepy music. Uh, I don't mind the rattling there, but the harp or whatever. Uh. It's, it's pretty it's pretty creepy, man. But it's no John Williams score. But Now, uh, Patton Oswalt had a good joke about men filmmakers. He was like talking about how female editors had like a really hard job at assembling all the footage. But guy filmmakers were like just blowing their their jizz everywhere, just like just shooting film. It's like, yeah, I'm gonna shoot this and shoot that, just shoot my my load everywhere. Where the woman has to actually like organize it and put it together yeah. as the finished film. I mean, he, dude, look, at all, are the, those all different license plates? I noticed one last time, but I could. So this dude's, yeah, he he eats up cars. This is uh, this is pretty yeah like you see like that angle that was pretty cool yeah it's funny they have that angle in GTA <laughs> see I don't know Most, I would have been done right here yeah yeah well he pretty much is but he didn't have much choice in the matter he's got to keep going yeah I mean there's really not much he can do. Like, that would be uh, embarrassing, you know? What? Would you be more scared or embarrassed at this point? I'd be fucking pissed. You'd be mad? So you'd, yeah. like, chase after the truck driver? No, I'd just be pissed, and I'd <laughs> probably not chase after the truck driver. I'd probably wait there for an hour or two. But I would be pissed. Well, yeah. Because I wrecked my car because of my own stupidity. <laughs> didn't he kind of start it in the beginning didn't he do so or he got he was the truck was behind him and then he got behind him the, he, he the cat and mouse shit. he got behind the truck and the truck was just going really slow so he did kind of start it right but 
Anyway, after that, like I like I'd be like, man, I just fucked my car up. You know, I'd be pissed. Yeah. And probably a little scared, but I would just want to say I hide it and let be pissed. Yeah. David Mann here, he doesn't know what to do. He's just emotionally distraught. I don't know if I, I would. I don't know. Now I would probably wait a little while, go into the bar or whatever's across the street. I mean, I did just wreck. I, yeah. He is a little dude, though. Yeah, he's a little puny. And I honestly think that's what makes this movie better. Because, like, The Hitcher was kind of the same way, too. You had a character like C. Thomas Howell, who was kind of, um, compared to The Hitcher, you know, he was kind of a little, you know, a little pony boy. Yeah, a little, yeah. His balls haven't dropped yet. Yeah. But, um, I think mean, this sequence right here, this is one of the most, I don't want to say imagine, imagine. Ugh, imaginative uh, sequences, Stay but junior. <laughs> yeah, but it's actually uh, pretty innovative on Spielberg's part, like to to include this scene because I don't know if it was even in the script. I'm sure it was, but he he sets it up as like this uh, Hitchcockian type scene. What do you mean? Like a when when David Mann goes to sit down and order food, whatever he's doing, he sees the truck there. I know I'm jumping ahead here, but he sees the yeah. truck, and uh, so he knows that the truck driver is potentially in the restaurant. So he has to look at all the guys in the restaurant. He looks at their at their boots. You know, he looks at their faces. He's watching them eat, and he clearly doesn't know who it is. And he's kind of got like these inner thoughts. It's, it's a really cool scene because it's this uh, insane buildup of suspense. You know. Because the truck driver potentially could have been in there, but he also could have just been hanging around I would have, outside. I'd probably assume he's in there eating. Yeah, and you never really know either. They don't. Yeah, well, they're not. You would. That's the. Well, that's the point. Yeah. Yeah, this guy Dennis Weaver, man, he's good though. He was a uh, see, like my mom. You know, I was telling you about my mom liking him in Gunsmoke. But I, I, the, one of the first times I saw him, I, actually I think the first time I watched him was in this movie, but I saw him in an Orson Welles movie uh, called Touch of Evil, and he played like this really insane, hopped up fucking night motel clerk or whatever. And, so, just somebody on cocaine. Yeah, pretty much. For Adderall. Yeah, it, it, that's how he acted. And I think that's why Spielberg chose him for this movie, because he was like, I need somebody with that energy level, you know, to to get, you know, scared and frenetic and see i would like to think that the truck driver's in here yeah they never really tell you and and it that's what kind of makes it scary is to know that he it it could be or is one of those people yeah yeah where i wonder if the uh, is that it is that no i was looking for like an old cigarette machine oh yeah this looks like the, a place that you know you'd totally see one. Yeah. yeah, see, he's not in there. Do, do they yet. still have cigarette machines? No, no. When was the last Why time not? you've I mean, seen they... somebody smoking? Well, yeah, that's true too. Oh, that's cool. But I mean, they still sell cigarettes. I just I don't know why they don't have cigarette machines. Uh, oh, dude, it came some law bullshit. Hmm. I can guarantee you. Yeah. They're even trying to take away menthol cigarettes right now. I know you keep saying that. <laughs> I haven't seen them do it yet, but I know they're trying. Yeah. Dude, his head's all spinning. This is cool. And you wonder if like Spielberg did that. See where that open sign is or that reflection on the wall? Okay. I wonder if Spielberg did that intentionally. Like He was all about composition, man. Anything he could get in the frame that was interesting. He, Spielberg's really good with framing. So you mean they like set it up to yeah. do that where it's not naturally doing that. Right. Like something just to make feel it. That, feel that space because that is a lot of yeah, white space. exactly. Negative space. Spielberg was probably like, man, we need something on this wall here. You know? I see. They try to make you think it might be this dude. Yeah. But that's completely a ruse. Mm-hmm. Because he so happened. It's the paranoia. Yeah. And he's hiding his face, motherfucker. He knows who you are. <laughs> Yeah, you know, Dennis Weaver, he was good enough to be in feature films, and he was in some.
But he was all over TV, man. He did a lot of TV movies uh, around this time. He was in a 1973 horror film that was just on TV. I have it on YouTube. <laughs> Whoa, Mick. <laughs> oh, <laughs> from Wolf Creek? Yeah. P- part two. Not yeah. One. Part two. <laughs> Dude, we need to watch some Wolf Creek. Dude, I bet part two of Wolf Creek, you know, it's a big-ass truck chasing some people. Is it? Hey, yeah, there, part I, two, yeah. And remember, he goes off the... He ends up driving it, putting it in part or oh, neutral yeah. and trying to hit the dude right, at the bottom yeah, with it. That's right. You know, put, uh, he sends that shit off like a missile. Yeah, dude, parts of, of Wolf Creek 2 remind me of this movie. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Crazily enough. Yeah, he but Dennis Weaver, he was in this movie called Still Terror. going through puberty. Will you stop interrupting me, you son of a bitch? <laughs> what now? <laughs> he was in this movie called Terror on the Beach, and it was like a 1973 horror film. For anybody who's interested in it, he, he he's kind of, you know, he's kind of a lot like this character in that movie. Kind of a pushover, gets terrorized by like a biker gang or something, but... You're not going to watch it. I, I know you're not. But I just wanted to let you know about it. I just wanted to plant I'll that seed. I'll probably forget the fucking name of it. <laughs> yeah. But I did. What's that uh, psych, What's that biker movie from the 70s? I think I got it on Arrow. There was a lot of it. them. Psycho or... Oh, it starts with a P. Gosh, I can't... Psychomania? Maybe. Is, Is it all it? one word? It's got the people with the white helmets and they kind of... I think I think I think so. It's, I think it's Psychomania. I there, got it. It was my one of my first arrows I bought. If it was Arrow Video, it had to have been Psychomania. There was a lot of those uh, in the seventies. A lot of those exploitation films that had like these dangerous biker gangs and shit like that. What? what he, I think find him a psychiatrist? Huh? Is that what he said? Uh, well, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't picking up on any other shit because I was paying attention. He was to like, you. "I gotta find me a psychiatrist." I was paying attention not to interrupt you. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's not Hill. That dude's too old. <laughs> All these guys look like Harry Dean Stanton. <laughs> I, I I don't make that connection, but I will say I think they all look alike. They do. A lot alike. They do. And see, that's what kind of adds the... Oh, uh, Maynard James Keen. <laughs> what? <laughs> Did you see Maynard? He was right there. What, just because he had sunglasses on? No, because his head was shaved. <laughs> and he looked like Maynard. Did he have the... Oh, he dude, had he, the his the, head the, is shaped like an alien, dude. Well, he looks like Maynard. Doesn't, he, doesn't Maynard wear the straw, the straw cowboy hat, too? I don't know. Maynard just looks like an alien. <laughs> Wears shades, doesn't he? And Major James to... Keenan is a fucking alien. Yeah. See, I like this part, though, because this is kind of like the only part of the movie where he's wrestling with his inner thoughts. I was about to say, anytime I hear him talking, instead of dot lines of dialogue, it seems to be inside his head, mm-hmm. voiceover. Yeah, I like that. I like this part, because it's... He's, uh... You know, I don't know. Maybe there's other that parts of the movie where he does... Out of focus. Is it... That, oh no way, man! Dude, that shot was fuzzy. Well, I mean, maybe it's the stock footage, but his, you'll have uh, to excuse me. That's Mr. really Mr. sharp. Spielberg, there. he was working on a a twelve day schedule here. My bad, my bad. <laughs> I like this little that little Dutch angle he did. That was cool, but I, maybe he does have an inner monologue kind of later on in the film. But I thought I heard one earlier when he. I thought he stopped. What was the first? Oh, when he was in the bathroom. Yeah. He, so it's yeah. still the same sequence, I guess. It's very, like, film noirish. Remember how, like, those uh, main character the characters in those film noir films, they would have, like, that inner monologue churning all the time? I think that's pretty cool. Uh, Maybe it's a little outdated by today's standards, but... I was wondering if people nowadays would consider it cheap. Because you're pretty much telling the guy's feelings and what he thought. Maybe. A lot of people kind of see it as too novelistic. I like. I don't mind it. Uh, yeah, I like it. See, I even like this too, where it's like Sanders a scenario. Totally Maynard, right there. It's a Mick sen- and Maynard. <laughs> I like how this. Oh, is- Danny Matherson. Where did he come from? <laughs> Danny Matt. <laughs> <laughs> did you? Gosh, Danny. Hey. Oh, Danny Masterson. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The dude's even still blowing smoke at the screen. I like how this dude turns and he's just like drinking his beer as he turns. Would that not be awkward? You just walk up and start looking at people. Yeah. Well, that, that's what oh, I was saying okay. about that Never scene. He's it was in his head. Yeah, I, I okay. like how he's running those imaginary scenarios. Sure. It goes to show you that he's like a super anxious dude. Like, he is completely thinking this out. Yeah, he's 
and running the scenarios in his head. I do that. I, I run scenarios. And see, I'm, I'm like this occasionally. Like I get, I go what, through, eating food. <laughs> well, yeah, all the all the time. <laughs> As you saw earlier, I was I was chowing down like a son of a bitch earlier. But uh, I'm kind of like this, where sometimes I don't feel like speaking up. You notice when the waitress walked off, he was like, he was like, uh, I'd like some ketchup, but he didn't actually tell her that. He just kind of said it to himself because he's. In kinda, his head. Yeah, it kind of has this defeatist attitude of like, I never get what I want. But if he just spoke up and asserted himself, maybe he would. See, I go through these uh, phases where sometimes I get really mad and I'll tell people, this is what I fucking want. You know, but then I go through other phases where like, I kind of feel beat down by society and then I'm kind of just like, eh, fuck it. Kick my ass a little more world, you know? And that's kind of like the story of David Mann here. He's... You know, he's he's kind of like any other distraught man, middle-aged, you know, distraught man who's kind of dealing with his wife and these fucking, these dudes that look like alpha males that want to just run over him. And the truck is the ultimate foe. <laughs> okay. You said it was a ruse. I was waiting for the ruse. <laughs> uh, that's kind of comical. That was, yeah, that was a good payoff. That was, yeah. Yeah. For those who don't know, we're at the part where he he thought the dude was getting into the uh, the big rig, but it was just a truck who was behind it. Yeah, and the guy that that was one of the guys, and you were like, "That guy's just a ruse." So I was yeah. waiting for the ruse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The payoff, I guess, for the ruse. Yeah, I like how he's looking at their boots too, because he saw the dude. Uh, that's that's the only thing he knows. He saw the boots while yeah. they were at the gas station. He had those uh, shit kicker heels on. Oh yeah, and I completely forgot about this part too. He's like, he's about to like walk up on one of the dudes. You know, how, <laughs> dude's cracked it. I wouldn't do that. That'd just make my that'd make my awkward day even worse. What if you walked up on somebody because I thought they were gonna be following? I'm I'm already in my head like this dude is over here. Yeah. I wouldn't want to make a bigger scene. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think at this point too, what kind of prompts him to do it is he saw the boots, and I think it's probably either close to the same pair or maybe the exact same pair i don't know but i thought they were lighter but i also for i could have forgotten i could have swore they were the other boots yeah the other guy they probably were the other guy's boots and they put the same boots on that actor yeah. and walked out and shit. just to make the audience think you but know. was that the the boot is the guy sitting down yeah him. yeah oh dude he totally if i'm <clears throat> gonna judge somebody off the way they look if they're a crazy truck driver that guy could probably be it yeah the other people in here are kind of old and see how awkward this is? Like, Spielberg yeah. is so good at making <clears throat> things awkward. Like, he, he really puts you, like, in the subjective point of view of the character. It's so fucking awkward. He's like, man, you just cut it out. Yeah, just fucking cut it out. Yeah, just, just cut it out a little bit, eh? Well, the way the guy approaches him. He, like how he him? walked him? He was all <laughs> stiff and he, like, oh, yeah. scooched over. He just kind of, like, slid over there. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of like walking up face first, he slid in sideways he did, back he, he first. He did, yeah, yeah. That's actually a good um, observation. A I good guess. observation. He did slide over there. He didn't. He didn't approach him with his chest out and yeah. facing forward. But this is really good acting from this dude. I'm, I'm actually surprised Dennis Weaver did not go on to have a, you know, an extensive feature career. Whoa. Dude, he's getting some balls. Yeah. Oh, oh shit. And man. I forgot he gets, he gets his ass whooped right here. Well, if you're going to do that, you got to expect that. Yeah. <laughs> that, that dude's loving it. Yeah. Like Dan a cigarette hanging out of his dude, mouth. That's not a cigarette. That's Danny, dude. He's been drinking and smoking. <laughs> you got Maynard over there listening to all the music and shit. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. I'm like seeing all these. Uh, I thought I saw. I thought I saw somebody. I think I'm tripping over here. Probably are you drinking? No, Pepsi. No. <laughs> yeah. Or is that Pep? <laughs> That's Pepsi. Yeah, I'm just drinking Pepsi tonight. I'm like, I must be just be highly caffeinated. I'm seeing all these classic actors. I mean, you're over there seeing Danny Masterson. So <laughs> I may not. Dude, I may not I be see, on your yeah, level of uh, illusions, but yeah. uh, wait. 
Did you say on my level illusions? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> what? I may not be on your level of illusions. But <laughs> okay. I thought you said evolution. And then I don't know what I just said a minute ago. I never know what you're saying. Yeah, who knows what's going to come out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> don't say it. No. <laughs> <laughs> don't. Stop giggling. Stop it. I can hear you. Dude, like... I'm it, internally giggling. Is he still in the bar? I would have totally been gone. I done yeah, made a scene. Yeah, yeah. He just got his I, ass I whooped. I made a scene. You know? <laughs> he just got his ass beat and he sits back down. Oh, and there goes the truck. But see, yeah. See, that's the part. Like, Dude's been in the shitter the whole time. Yeah, that's the part where, like, he pretty much, like, uh, you don't know if he was in the restaurant the whole time. And he just, like, while he was getting, you know... There, he, getting his he was probably in clock. the shitter then. Who, the the truck driver? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, he could have been. He could have been. But, you know, while the dude was getting his ass kicked, he could have slipped out. Could have, but did we not see everybody at the bar right before it went to that, him sitting down? As he walked over to the seat or something? Did Is that what I, I Fuck, I don't remember what that's, I've seen. That's dude. true, too. Yeah. Because you would think he'd be able to figure it out with through the process of elimination there. But See, I would assume now, how I'm taking it as a first-time viewer, that the guy was in the shitter because he is actually well, kind of scared. But, because, he, but he went to the shitter earlier. Yeah, and the guy was, like, not in there yet. No, but he did notice that the, the truck, truck, truck... Car before he went to... Sh- or truck before the, he went to shitter? He came out of the shitter, and he saw the truck parked in the parking lot after he came out of the shitter. Shitter. So, okay, so the guy's not in the shitter yet. He just parked and was walking. He's yeah, not but, even in yet. But he would have seen him come through the... Come in the restaurant. Ah, ah this is Hollywood. <laughs> I like to think the guy was on in the shitter because, you know, he's been driving that truck all crazy up through yeah. these mountains, so he's a little terrified. But look here, we'll never know. I'm going to put something together in my head. <laughs> yeah. Well, you keep thinking about that. Uh, and I'm, I'm Anything's gonna... better than supernatural. <laughs> well, I didn't say it was supernatural. I said that, like, it, 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 it kind of, uh, the truck is kind of, I mean. You know, no, there's a driver. I've seen his I, hairy I just, arms and Metaphorically boots. speaking. <laughs> oh, you and your metaphors. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. But, you know, because I talk in metaphors all the time. But the oh, see, this, is that what that is? I thought it was tongues. <laughs> yeah, that too. But the, this scene right here, uh, this was the one of the ones that was added. Added the school bus scene. Yeah, which honestly is one of my favorite scenes. Because, Have we missed the other one? Uh, maybe. I I, I just remember know? reading school bus. Okay, there, but there was another, another scene. It's that he two added. scenes that were added. Yeah. Yeah. See, this is uh, it's really creepy because like. I don't know. I'll, I'll let you kind of... We'll, we'll talk about it as it plays Creepy? out. Creepy? Well, when the truck I mean, shows up, it actually does something that's out of character. Uh, but no, what I was saying, okay. the, the supernatural thing, the the truck is... He's beastly, you know? He, he's, he's, he's very... Uh, he's, beastly? He, well, he's, he's monstrous. He's a, he's a monster truck. <laughs> <laughs> I like your use of beastly. I wasn't expecting that. But. Yeah. He's a fucking beast. So let's hear. Okay, so since I the dialogue is faint, let's see here. They're broken down, the radiator or something overheated, and now he's got going to try to get him going or help him out. Yeah, and what I like about the scene, or what I like about how the scene plays out, is uh, the fact that David is unable to do anything about this shit. He still can't push. He's he's inadequate. Yeah, exactly. He can't perform. But then, uh, you know, veiny, hard, erect cock truck shows up. Mister Meat. Yeah, and it, and it or, gets or, it, it gets the bus out of this mess. What what sexy did I call it earlier? Oh, <laughs> oh fuck! I, can't I don't think know, of man. Now. Fuck! Don't you hate when you say something? You were like, I kind of like that line, but <laughs> yep. But come on, that little B car doesn't have the thing to push a bus full of kids, even. I know. Oh, but is the, he hooked on it now? Yep. Oh. But see, he that, fuck up his car. But what makes the scene interesting, though, is the fact that, like, the kids are making fun of him. You know, he feels just completely inadequate. Like yeah, he, everybody's making fun of him. Yeah, he just feels flaccid. I and, don't like driving behind 
school buses. I don't either. Dude. I don't want those kids like making faces yeah, and all kinds of shit. But... I don't either. I'm like scared of it for some reason. <laughs> there like, is like a, a yeah. <laughs> it's like I know that I could kick all their asses, but I don't like it. The kids scare me. Like when they start like making fun yeah, of you, you don't know why they're looking at you. Yeah, and and uh, it's like, dude, you could get on there and like punch every one of them in the face, and they would stop. But it's just the fact that, like, when you pull up behind them, you know they're staring at you, and you com- you completely avoid eye contact. And because you know they're laughing at how old you are, first off. <laughs> yeah, Hung up. Like, yeah, see, Don't but, sit on the hood, dude. You've done ran it into a fence, and now you put your bumper up under his. Yeah, so I like how David's kind of getting fed up. But he did raise his voice to this, like, guy that... Yeah, well, he's starting to assert himself a little bit. I mean, this is... uh, We're kind of approaching the... Well, he asserted himself when he approached the dude. You know, so he kind of did it. You know how I said he slid in, not face forward. But then when he started to get accusatory, is that even a word? (laughs) Uh, Sure. uh, He turned, though, to face the dude and get into his face. He even bent over, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, he did. It's all in his body language, his mannerisms... It's how he acts as as a man, and and like, <laughs> dude, that look like, yeah, and that looks like some Barney Fife or something. Looks like he's fucking like, something, so... but but um, but like, uh, yeah, it's completely like everything just kind of symbolizes how David is not the man that he wants to be, but you can see the frustration building the whole time because he does kind of start asserting himself. I mean, he's not a complete. Well, you can voice. only take so much before yeah. you break. Yeah. And he, uh, this, oh, this part right here. Oh, I love that. That I is love pretty it. cool. It's one of my favorite shots because I like how the truck is in the tunnel. And it, like I said, it kind of, uh, it's how Spielberg frames his shit. Well, yeah. Well, and the, I like the contrast. The, the truck is the same darkness as the tunnel. And then it was like all this dark footage and architecture and the, the truck. And then you had this background. I, yeah. That's just how I liked it. Well, yeah, it's awesome. And if I can go back to my, supernatural talk for a little bit the monster's eyes light up <laughs> uh, see that's just a fucking truck driver playing games <laughs> you want to play games <laughs> you're not using your imagination and it's pissing me off i wish you would go down no, this... dude well you fucked me on the last the last <laughs> one we did with pet cemetery i saw that all like yeah i guess you woke me to it yeah yeah <laughs> Well, you started seeing, like, what, the depressing angle of the movie? No, or? just, like, friggin' what's his name? Oh, we were talking about uh, Judd being the, uh, the, like the... Angel of death, or just being, like, a some kind of demon or that's something. That's right, yeah. You gotta and come then, with me on this, uh, this supernatural road, man. No, I'm, dude, I saw hairy arms and fucking boots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, I think it's funny how, like, he told that dude to stay off the hood of the car, and he's just getting up there, like... <laughs> putting all of his fucking might on it that's how terrified he is though <laughs> yeah yeah and you know what i think is fucking, he's scared of maynard <laughs> what i think is completely ironic about this scene is that the truck helps the truck completely helps the fucking bus out yeah it's totally show the inaccuracies <laughs> To say, look what I can do and you can't. Yeah, it's showing him what he cannot do. This truck is basically... I mean, if this truck followed him home, it'd probably fuck his wife. I Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was really uh, graphic. <laughs> In my head. Yeah, see? He's showing him up. Yeah. I think you know, some people would probably Or just... maybe it's to confuse him. He has a confused look there. Yeah, well, he's not quite sure. I mean, I guess there's like a uh, a degree of ambivalence here because he's not sure if this truck is inherently evil or if he's just, you know, fucking with him. But um, I had a thought. Fuck my ass. What was the thought? Um, I don't know. Oh, I think that, that okay... Most people would probably disagree with me on this, but I feel like, tonally speaking, that this is kind of like an unofficial, the first part of an unofficial trilogy of Spielberg films, if I may. Um, okay, I'll, I'll ride this one for a little bit. Okay, so this is the 
first one, Duel, you have the second movie, Jaws, and the third one being Jurassic Park. All three of those movies, just, just I mean, I know okay. you're completely... You're going to have to make the connection yeah, with Jurassic Park I know Park you're completely me. not buying what I'm selling here, but but they all, tonally, tonally speaking, have a, the same feel of like uh, um, an unstoppable beast. It stops at nothing just to fuck with people. Like, you have this truck, and then you have Jaws the shark. I get those two. And then you have the T-Rex in... in uh, so you're saying for a little bit of segment. For a little bitty sequence. Just give it to me. <laughs> you gotta give me that one. Dude, you're because, reaching. Well, I, I mean, kinda. But I can also see, like, in Jurassic Park, the T-Rex feels a lot like the shark in Jaws. What about the raptors? Them too. I mean, yeah, for that matter. Hell, even the... So why don't you just say any dinosaur? Well, the Dilophosaurus too, if you want if you want me to go down. I mean, if you want me to go there, but I mean... I yeah, just, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I think the T-Rex is just more, uh, if I can use this word again, beastly. Uh, it, it was cool the first time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's an unstoppable beast. And, uh, you know... I don't know. A dude, re- dude ran off the road. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have said it was a fucking trilogy. Cause <laughs> well, no. I but, was like, okay, this is going to be really... Okay, okay, and then you dropped the the Jurassic turd on me. <laughs> Not that Jurassic Park... Jurassic Park's great, but I was, I guess... Okay, good. So you do like Jurassic Park. I do, but like, just... Uh, but I, you're, I, you're target. I just... The tonal... And this whole movie in Jaws, there's one thing that chases Jurassic Park. The T-Rex is just the, yeah. periodic. It's right. not a constant, right? Constant threat. Well, I could see but that. Yeah, I said something about dinosaurs. So instead of giving it a T Rex, just say the dinosaurs because the raptors were also a con- like a threat. Yeah, a constant. yeah, they were. And then, but I was trying to go out on a limb to I make mean, a connection, yeah. <laughs> take away identifying. Yeah, the or giving a name to the monster, just give it a generic dinosaur name. Yeah, but like for me, okay. Jo- so all the the goddamn dinosaurs in Jurassic Park are just like this truck and just like the shark and jaws because they're i guess they stop at nothing until they get you know their their prey would you say that's uh uh part of their genetics or their makeup <laughs> yeah i mean life uh find, I don't finds a way yeah. uh-oh so he's had a calm moment here honestly don't remember what happens here i wonder if this is the added scene this uh let's see i think we've already been to the oh is he like get upset about this dude he looks dejected now since he drove off the road you know he's driving well well yeah not necessarily he's completely dejected he's he's deflated he's depressed i mean that right honestly i don't i don't see that in that guy's face right there i see confidence in that guy's face right now but the way the car was driving a minute ago before that shot well it was kind of slow yeah let down but that dude right there had a stunning jawline and was like bred confidence. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean he's you know, what does that say? I six nine. I mean, please. Oh no, I four nine. Uh, PC. I thought it said I six nine piece. <laughs> like his license plate, but no. I'm seeing shit. I'm seeing double now. That one beer is like one beer. Yeah, that's not like you. Oh, it's totally like me. <laughs> I'm surprised I haven't thrown up yet. Where's the second one, sir? Oh, you're giving me like a better. Uh, you're giving me uh, benefit of the doubt that I make it past the first one. <laughs> I, mean, I was, hope, I was known not. for throwing up off of one Smirnoff. Oh yeah, so, <laughs> so like <laughs> that was you. <laughs> yeah, that was. Dude, I remember that. This guy's got. I hope wherever he's going doesn't run out of gas or whatever he's carrying. Oh, yeah. Dude, I was just going to say, can you imagine the goddamn stench being behind this truck? I was behind a dude the other day, man, and his truck smelled like a fucking <laughs> okay, asshole. Okay, you should lead off with, I, I was behind a guy's truck. You said I was behind a guy. <laughs> I was behind. I, 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 I mean, I was behind. Like, I was right behind a guy's ass. <laughs> yeah. And you were giving him the truck? <laughs> yeah. But, dude, yeah, I just, because I can't stand that smell of, like, fumes and exhaust and shit. The exhaust, yeah. Yeah, dude. I will say, though, I like the way gas smells. I kind of do, too. Like, have you ever seen that movie uh, with Philip Seymour Hoffman? It's called, like, Love Liza or some shit. Uh, no, I wouldn't see anything named that. But, dude, it's an awesome movie, though. All right. uh, I mean, it's got Philip Seymour Hoffman. Uh, yeah, it's, it's great. Like... He gets addicted to huffing gasoline. And, like, so, I mean, even though, like, 
I don't know if that's really the main plot, but see, his wife commits suicide, and so he is all depressed, and he starts just huffing gas, and he's like, he finds like these kids that are into it too. It's like the whole movie is like Philip Seymour Hoffman just completely huffing gas, and he like he starts taking up uh, hobbies and shit, like building model airplanes. And anyway, it's a crazy fucking movie, but it's um, it's kind of like when I saw it when I was real young, I kind of related to it because I was like, man, I could is see myself getting addicted. Hoffman to Hoffman young in it? He's younger. What year? But it was like early two thousands. When you say young, I think of like when you were a kid. Well, yeah, yeah. Um, this was in my, I should say, formative years because I was seeing a lot of good indie films around this time, like early 2000s. But Philip Seymour Hoffman, uh, he made me want to huff gas. Why? Because like you said, dude, I've always kind of liked that smell of gas. Uh, I kind of like, you know, I used to kind of sniff the markers when I was a kid. That's different. Gas, though, smells good from a distance, but man, if you get right up on it. Yeah. I mean, it would probably knock you the fuck out, but. Oh, it'll, f- yeah, lightweights like us probably. See that's what oh, did he these, say? These shots are oh. fucking. These shots are the tits. Like I love those shots. <laughs> those were not tits. Those <laughs> well, were tires. <laughs> uh, well, just you the, just like that. Exactly. Like I saw yeah, I tits you. as soon as I saw those shots. I just thought of something to yeah. jerk off to it. And pretty much everything in this movie just makes yeah. me want to like come on something. Because <laughs> I mean, from your mo- from a movie, like telling. even this right here. It's like how the fuck did he get out of? The, I mean, that was a. A very dangerous stunt. Okay, now that's crossed the line. It's what? Did the he... Annie's been up. Like, he would have run him over. Yeah, yeah. Why'd he break my cages up? Oh, he's coming back around. Yeah, dude, he's... Yeah, he's not fucked up about it. Like... <laughs> I, I like it. Oh, god damn. I like how... Um, there you go. Like, Snake and spider. Yeah, I like how he he's not like fucked up about attacking this dude outside of his car. Like before, you thought that he didn't, he hadn't. No, like before, you thought it was just a a, a game. And not only is he attacking him, he's he's freaking murdering this chick's business. Yeah, or loves. I don't. Yeah, this was that chick that uh, you were reading about earlier that. Uh, it was in the trivia. It was that Lucille Benson chick okay. or whatever. Okay, so that that's the gas station then that was used in other things. So yeah, okay. he he went on to use her in what nineteen forty one or something. Yeah, and uh, and I think there's the, a I think it's this gas station. At yeah, the, too with her. Yeah. Spielberg See, also. That, mu- that music's not that bad. Like I will say, this music's kind of lame. I tried lame. to tell you the music was good, no, and you were like, no, "No, this music is ass." But it's not the little heart shit. I will, and it, like, like I was saying, you, you my didn't... thought is this: that wasn't that bad, but this movie has been kind of lame. Well, you didn't, you didn't like the the trickling. Is that what it was? Yeah. That little trickling. I mean, I mean, yeah, but overall, just in general, I will say the music's still lame. I'm not too in, like. With a lot of the shit we've watched, this is the worst musically. Well, yeah, I mean, you gotta think it was made for TV, first off. And then, you know, they're also kind of um, doing that whole Bernard Herrmann <laughs> psycho thing. You said, it was made for TV. Like, <laughs> you gotta remember, it was made for TV. Well, yeah. I mean, it was. It was, uh, you know, it was, everything was kind of cheap and, and gimmicky. And But see, also, they're doing the goddamn... Everything you know, the Bernard Herman stringy psycho thing that everybody was doing after they well, heard I could the see psycho it with thing. that scene, but earlier that shit was trashed. Like that one time that worked, the music worked with the scene. Before when you first heard it, man, that was trash. Oh man, don't ruin this movie for me. Yeah, that was trash. But I get your Bernard <laughs> Bernard Harming right. Everybody, Bernard Harming. Everybody, everybody was. <laughs> How many names will I never say? Right. The name is Sir Bernard Herman. There's also Sir Elton John. <laughs> what was I going to say about the music? You've completely just fucked my train of thought again. Um, I won't be seeing Forbes so today. Oh, Is no, he still in his mind, I guess? I was going to say about the music. Everybody was doing that, that e, 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 you know, the... Psycho. Yeah, everybody was copying after that shit around, around this time. It's like for 20 years after Psycho was made, everybody was like, dude, we got to do the fucking Bernard Herrmann strings, you know? Yeah, well, it plays good with intense intense moments. Mm-hmm, yeah. Gets, uh, gets under the skin. 
tax the nerves. Yeah. I wonder if those are dissident notes. I don't know. I don't know what that means. Uh, like if I'm playing my guitar and I play a note in there that kind of sounds off. Mm. And, and it like really stink, hits the ear. That that part right there that we just saw, that you was sleeping. Yeah, that was really really clever. Like I like how Spielberg makes you think it's the truck with the horn. Oh uh, yeah. But then like as soon as it cuts to the wide, you see the train. And it's like man. And then he gets T bone. For for like a split. But he's even laughing at it. <laughs> yeah, for yeah, because like even for like a split second in the rear view uh, mirror or in the uh, the windshield, I should say. It's almost like you see the truck, but then when it cuts to the the wider shot, you see it's the train. So it, I always thought that was just really fucking clever. I, I've noticed some directors will try to compose suspense scenes, and they don't know how to do it. Like Spielberg, completely, uh, you know, not only did he learn from Hitchcock, but he, but he also learned, I think, a lot from the um, the French New Wave directors and you know people like that. Think about all of his friends. David too. Lean and shit. Didn't he John like Ford. go to college with all the greats and they he, were all friends and shit afterwards? Yeah, yeah, dude. You know, can you imagine being in that group? That's an elite group of filmmakers. Yeah, that's like the Rat Pack of the filmmaking. Yeah, no, I agree because they all pretty much, they all had the kind of the same sensibilities. They were all friends with each other, and uh, I mean they competed with each other. You know, right? But, oh well, yeah. but it was like a healthy competition mm-hmm. and. Um, they all kind of came from that same, not only did they kind of go to the same universities, but they also, um, had the same sensibilities as European filmmakers. It was a really artistic time. It's like these dudes were making commercial films, but they were making them with a, a certain foreign flair. Like, you know, people like Scorsese, De Palma, even, uh, Coppola. Oh yeah. That's, that shot. That was cool. Yeah. For people who don't know, we were at that fucking awesome gnarly shot where he, where the the car skids and then it zooms back and you see the the undercarriage of the fucking truck, badass shot. That was uh, that was a cool. That it, was a cool way of doing that. It made me erect. <laughs> yeah, you get film boners. I do. Completely get hard from watching movies. I get it though. Like angles, composition. I guess in general is is what's cool yeah yeah especially it, nowadays it's when what, something hits you you know how you, you'll see an image and it just fucking, well, you don't see shit like this nowadays no no you don't it's there's a certain flair to it and you know you're talking earlier about how like when people saw it on tv imagine what they were seeing they were seeing like a cinematic style on tv and they were like what the fuck we, we this should be on the big screen you know this should be in the goddamn theater well, you know, well, what I, what I was going to say before I let you finish your comment for once, uh, uh, comment or train of thought, uh, you and your fucking comments over there. Uh, <laughs> well, with all the composition and how this is shot, you don't see it in TV or you don't see it nowadays in movies. Like, I think we've talked about it nowadays. You just kind of get what the, the shots you need to get out you don't really set three it or up four different. shots set up yeah like a wide your intro or yeah you, you know and They're then not... your and then your conversation shots however you want to say it your over the shoulders yeah see they're not visually telling the story yeah like like you said they're doing the over the shoulder coverage they're doing their master shot they're getting their their wides their mediums maybe the occasional close it's almost up. like commercial or tv shots yeah and and they might even do an insert that they need for a certain cutaway but they're not actually visually telling the story like the way scorsese would or the way spielberg would like that that's a completely beautiful shot and it's not just the composition it's the goddamn lens choice it's like it's like you know earlier i forgot to mention it but there was a cool angle on the one of the dudes that was in the fucking restaurant and spielberg had this upward angle on him that was that could have been you know oh, was it the dude sitting down when they started when he confronted the guy yeah it was the guy when that he was confronted eating. the dude and he had like a a, a, a close up angle on the dude like medium close up and it was an upward angle kind of a super the guy upward seemed angle to be at a, a, a weird angle. it made the dude look at a weird angle be, yeah because he used like a 24 millimeter lens or some shit and it made it look completely uh 
you know, distorted. But he used that for that scene because that's what he was going with. He made he it was sh- showing up on him. Yeah. And then looking, I guess it made him look weird, but also mean. It was a weird. It was playing with the the emotion or the the mental. It's more of a it was. a psychological uh, uncomfortableness. Like yeah. they're not just like sh- telling the story. They're also shooting it in a way that breeds anxiety or, or yeah, exactly. uncomfortableness. Yeah, it was kind of uh, tying in with how that scene was was expressed yeah. on a psychological level because you could almost see that that was from David's point of view, even I mean, though it yeah. even though it wasn't his eye line. That it's was how like he was that's, picturing it. Yeah, yeah, that's what he was seeing. He was seeing that this yeah. dude is bigger than me, mm-hmm. and he completely looks distorted and disjointed in a fucked up way because right. he's a redneck who could probably kick my ass. Well, he it, well <laughs> the the angle up at him when he was doing that was really funny looking because he was also at the side. It was made the awkwardness. Yeah, uh, but they did it earlier too. I didn't really like it because it made me. Uh, I just didn't like how it rocked. It rocked too much. But when he first comes in from the wreck. And enters the place all the way to the bathroom. It's all shaky. Well, you know really what you, did, you didn't like about that? It was handheld. Right, but handheld works. But right there, it was like really shaky for me, and it made me a little nauseous. Like some, there's some handhelds that, that was are the idea, fine. Though. Right, but that's yeah. what I was about to get at. They did that for the purpose because he was just in that wreck. Yeah. So it was kind of like you know his concussed or whatever. Yeah, yeah. He's still in his head. He was, it was go- going it was, into that place for the first time. You know. Yeah. Well, see, that's funny. I didn't even take it. I took it as like he was still fucking shaking yeah, up he was, from the wreck. Yeah, he was woozy, but he was also kind of going into this new environment, you know? Uh, but yeah, uh, so I knew why they did it. I knew why they used it, but yeah. it just, I just didn't like it. I would have probably maybe, you could still do handheld, but there was just something too much about it for me. But I, I, I didn't say anything because I knew why they did it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you could see the, 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 the intention behind it. Yeah, I just think they could have <laughs> used a better take, but they probably didn't have one. I love that part where that old lady's like, "Damn." Well, it's funny in the truck, kind of like fucking with everybody. Yeah, like uh, don't get around him. Like, yeah, dude, they got the fuck out. They did. Yeah, and uh, that old like that's the same old couple that Spielberg used in fucking uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Oh, it's nice. The, yeah, it's the same couple. Neat little trivia there. But yeah, the shots here also uh, get inside. You are the shots let you inside to him. Yeah, I, I think something cool right here happens too. He does a little triple punch in, maybe. Maybe I'm uh, hallucinating or dreaming that up, but it seems like it does a little cool little. Holy shit! Like my this, whole brain just like fell. This right here, he does like a series of cuts that goes into David Mann's psyche. Mm-hmm. And his face looks slightly different in each cut. That's what I like. And well, he's uh, probably it's telling a little bit of a different emotion. Yeah. And each, uh, yeah. It's like, man, you could have just like zoomed in on that. Uh, you know, but he does this uh jarring these little jarring cuts and it's almost like, okay, David Mann knows he's gotta fucking he's gonna have to face this dude, whether he wants to or not. He's this is the point where he's done. He's fucking done. Puts on the seatbelt. Starts stroking his cock, starts the engine. See, that's well. You said the cuts, the jump cuts. You said where his facial expressions are a little off. They're not the same. Well, dude, what slightly if, off kilter. Yeah. Was, well, is what if that was on purpose with the jump cuts, or do you think they just shot that because each jump cut was his expression and it, it was him basically kind of growing his balls? If yeah. you if you did that all in one zoom, you couldn't portray the expression being the change of his attitude. Right. Yeah. In a in a zoom, it almost looked like different setups. You know. Mm-hmm. Well, it 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 was too. There was yeah. different. Maybe even a different lens. Who knows? I mean, I know that shit costs money. You know, it takes longer to set that shit up, but but it completely pays off cinematically speaking. Yeah. Let's see you catch me now. But you yeah. can tell. Do you really tell the the uh, the artistry behind this movie? Artistry <laughs> or experiment experimentation behind yeah. it? Yeah. I mean, we're basically looking at the work of a of a twenty four year old auteur. Or however old Spielberg was when he did this. So Spielberg would have been roughly, tw- yeah, 23 or 24 when what, he did this movie. What's the most recent thing he's done? Or what's uh, the last thing Probably he did? that Bridge of Spies piece of shit. Did you, you, didn't, did you see that? 
I almost watched that today. Dude, Bridge of Spies, nah, not the, feeling that The one. Tom Hanks movie? Yeah. But it's more about the story than the, the shots and angles. It, right. I, Spielberg, I think, has got... I don't want to say he's got lazy. I mean, he's still clearly making fucking films when he doesn't have to. I mean, he could be, you know, floating floating on a raft somewhere in Tahiti. He just doesn't have to try as hard. Right, yeah. But, and he, he uses the same crew, which is important, too, because oh, they so. they know what he wants. It's like, it's like Hitchcock or any of those legends... They use the same crew, so it's like he's like a uh, oh gosh who uh, Dirty Harry uh, his crew uh, Clint Eastwood yeah, yeah he, he does the same thing too yeah he just shows up on set and they're like yeah we know what Clint that wants. dude is like in his nineties and he's still making movies yeah, like he's it, got one coming out na- recently and I bet the first AD makes all the creative decisions like they're probably just like hey Clint go to your fucking trailer and get blown we got this <laughs> like uh, dude I I mean. Oh, uh, see. I heard this thing about the birds, uh, where Is Hitchcock it? supposedly was not on set for like two fucking weeks, and the first AD apparently just knew what Hitchcock wanted so much. He may have been looking at storyboards or notes, but like Rod Taylor showed up to do the shooting for the birds, and when he showed up, he was like, "Hey, where, where's Hitch?" And they were like, "Oh, he's in his fucking trailer. He hadn't been here for two weeks." And and they were directing the movie without Hitchcock, which is fucking insane. Dude, what but, if the whole pre-production though? Like, what if during through pre-production they just knew from everything from pre-production? That's what I'm saying. And, yeah, you know, and they, they, they don't have all, to show out. Yeah, they had it all mapped out. They, you know, didn't even need them to call action. Well, but, you know, honestly, that probably should be is should. It should be like that because the director's there during pre-production. Yeah. And if everybody learns from pre-production, they should know what they want to be shot. Take, ideally. Yeah. I mean, I, I see what you're I saying. I could see a director being on set then now from that moment just to maybe coach the actors. Yeah. And I mean, it's kind of lazy. I mean, honestly, but if you are at that status in your career, like if you're at that point in your career where you can just kind of lay back and not have to be so hands on, I mean... Some people would see it as fucking lazy, but um, or maybe a little impassive. But yeah, I mean, if they know what needs to be done, and you can delegate to a degree. I mean, <laughs> but, uh, would you want a ninety-year-old fucking on your set? <laughs> yeah. No, dude, go stay in the go stay in your trailer during the cool, because we don't need you to be just dying hanging out on the set. I know. Which I, I mean, I don't know if Clint Eastwood. Clint Eastwood might still be hands-on. I've actually heard that. Uh, uh, I bet to an extent he is. Yeah. Uh, now, Spielberg, I think, is still really hands-on for his age. But you get kind of like some of those lazy directors. Like, And I hate to say this about John Carpenter, but one of the last movies that John Carpenter did, not the last movie, but... Uh, I like that shot. W- yeah, that that's good. awesome. Is that more of... That's a Dutch on the truck, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, his car is starting to... The radiator. Is, yeah, this is when that comes into play. But no... Uh, I was saying about John Carpenter, he, there was like either some, it was some BTS shit that I watched on the DVD and you can completely see how John Carpenter had like had it. He had had it with Hollywood. He'd had it with directing the, uh, and it was, uh, it was, it was ghost of Mars. And with every, with every fucking like shot or with every scene that they were showing, it showed like the crew working their ass off. And then, like, it would pan over to John Carpenter, and he and he'd just be like watching a basketball game or something. Like, he wasn't doing shit, dude. He was like completely unenthused. Like, didn't want to have anything to do with the production. He was just kind of sitting back, just like, yeah, oh, whatever, you know. He clearly wasn't making decisions. And I mean, I hate to talk that way about John Carpenter, but you know, he was uh, completely at that point in his career where he was just fucking done. You know, was he? What well, was he fighting with? Could he even make those decisions back then, or is the studios? Was he beat up because he had to deal with the studios? He was probably a little beat He's up like, at that point. I mean, because I don't know, I don't know any of the details behind it or whatever. But well, it wasn't his last movie, but it was one of his last movies. So, dude, I've seen Ghost of Mars like one time. Hey, dude, I love Ghost of Mars. I don't. I, does it have Ice Cube in it or somebody? It does. See, that's about all I remember from that. It also has a uh, fucking. Uh, Oh, the chick from Species. Mm. Natasha Henstridge. Yeah, I, I, need a, I need a little moment of silence. I used to have the biggest crush on her. She's hot, yeah. I just knew her as a Species girl. Yeah. Dude, Ghost of Mars has got fucking Jason Statham in it. But it's funny to think, what did he do before that? Did you just hear what I said? Yeah. 
<laughs> I guess it took me a little while to put the name with it. Yeah, no, but did you say something about John Carpenter? Yeah, I wanted to know what he did before then. Like, oh, well, let's see. Before Ghost of Mars, he did... Because um, when did he enter, like, the... Was he vampires, always... Vampires, maybe? Oh, that was pretty good. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. But, but I would say that it seems more... Would you say... It, not as experimental, more studio? Yeah, I mean, you can clearly tell that... um, in... in in John Carpenter's career that he was kind of getting beat up by the studios and shit. I just kind of I know that that didn't happen with Spielberg cuz nobody tells Spielberg what to do. But with John Carpenter, yeah, you can kind of and I got to show you that footage, dude, cuz in the, on this the special features, it's funny because like every goddamn shot where you think John Carpenter is making all these decisions, it the camera like literally pans over to John Carpenter by himself and he's not doing shit. Everybody around him is working circles around him and he's just not doing a fucking thing. It, I mean, but and it's hard to say if Spielberg is at that point in his career. Cause I know he's kind of, you know, he's getting up there in age. He's getting older, but I think from what I've heard, Spielberg is still really fucking cares about the quality. Like, yeah. And he, yeah, he does. He, and he micromanages, you know, and I've heard this about Billy Bob Thornton, that he only likes to work like, I think Jeff Bailey told me this, that he only likes to work like five or six hours a day. And like when Billy Bob shows up, he wants to kind of get his shot list done and stuff. But when he's done doing his takes, he's like, oh, you guys want to call it quits, get a beer? You know, he's just kind of done. He's not like a workhorse, you know. But I can only imagine fucking... A, a goddamn twenty-three-year-old Spielberg, a twenty-four-year-old Spielberg doing this shit. He this was, is him like trying to get creative, you know. Yeah. So this is him trying to really get into the industry. He was into TV, but he wanted to get that movie break. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I, well, I bet it helped whenever this was so good. They had to, you know, they made a theatrical version of it. That's a big. Yeah, this is a. Big, that's a big ego boner. Big accomplishment. Yeah. They were like, "Hey, Stephen, uh, we know that you stroked us off a little bit. Can you, but can you please make us come?" And he did. Yeah, he made him come. Sorry, you about to ask a question there? No, nah, I'm just admiring like the the I guess the choice of shots. Yeah, because this is all the angles and how close they are. It's like. That's the anxiety of it, you know, because when you're at that, that's what Dutch is for and close ups. Like you make those awkward close ups, Dutch angles. Yeah. It's all anxiety. And it was like going around the car, it seemed like. It's it's the shot choice. It's also the rapid cutting. Right. And then he starts to do these weird, like upward angles from below the steering wheel, which he didn't have to do, but he, he fucking did because he cares. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I bet people were really pissed off at him. Because some of the experimental angles he was doing, they were probably like, dude, nobody does this. Why are you doing that? Dude, he's one coverage. Huh? I bet he's he one coverage. Co yeah, he wanted coverage. I bet he had his seven cameras because I know he had cameras on certain scenes. On the end, the final scene is like seven cameras for one take. Yeah. Like, dude, he's probably just setting these cameras up to get coverage, I bet. He wanted or coverage, but he also had a vision. And I think that is what is really important about making films. But the problem is you have expediency and money and, and uh, you know, all these things, these factors that come into play now where nobody wants to take the time to make it artistic because everybody's like, they're either like, why are you doing this? Or we don't have time to be doing this. And, and it sucks because, you know, I mean, Spielberg obviously got it done for this movie miraculously, but I feel like there's a lot of movies that, that I, if I they... Feel if they paid more attention to their shot selection and composition the way he is, they could get, you know, better looking movies made. Uh, oh, okay, Jaws is good, but like, yeah. Jaws is nothing like this movie. Like, uh, this movie is almost, like, in Jaws, I don't feel this anxiety. Like, the anxiety of this Are you fucking character. kidding me? <laughs> no, to me, it comes across as like a normal, like, story. But, like, I don't feel like the playing with the camera angles like this and how this scene has gone through. Like, well, I feel like he was way more experimental on this. And how he, the shots he chose also cut together in such a good way. Like, this is, like, I, 
I don't know that I've seen another Spielberg movie that's cut like this and, and uses these angles. Well, first these, off, you're these... wrong. But but secondly, um, this yeah, this is kind of more There's a, a this... lot of close up Dutch angles in here. Yeah. It okay. Well, and and shaky camera. You're right. I, I mean, I guess the difference is this. This does seem like more of a straightforward like horror film, whereas Jaws. Is kind of more of an adventure film. Yeah, well, I don't. Well, yeah, even, even though Jaws is like the most terrifying fucking thing I've yeah, ever but seen it's in about, my life. But it's about a shark chasing people. You don't get inside the mind of those people, and the camera doesn't portray their psyche. I mean, it does, but I can see like really, I, it 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 gets into the psychology of each character. Like if you're talking about like Chief Brody or 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 even uh, how does it get in the psychology of their character by the way that that character is shot. Like this is all anxiety, well, close up. We'd dodging. have to watch Charles, really, but like, but I would say in that third act, when you're really, even in the the emo, I hate to like go off on this Jaws tangent, but like in the first um, third of the movie where he's kind of dealing with the Alex Kentner incident, you know, the boy gets eaten up. You kind of see a lot of uh, what Chief Brody is going through psychologically or or emotionally, uh, but. Granted, it's not the same because this is clearly a, a cat and well, mouse I, fucking popcorn I, movie. But, the, but <laughs> the close-ups and the awkward angles, like, yeah. I don't feel like he's ever been this awkward. I, well, yeah, I mean, it, it, yeah, I'll give you that. It, it's, Maybe it's, that's a better way of trying to say what I'm trying to say. Yeah, like, it's, it's like I'm a, seeing a um, different Spielberg right now. Yeah, well, this is kind of a nerve-shattering movie where, where Jaws is like... Um, what would you say like it kind of more of a i don't know i don't know how to explain to me jaws just seemed like it was a a normal like you know i don't it's sad to say shot normal but to me i feel like i'm watching like i don't know watching this i let me just say this i got a sense of aronofsky <laughs> where i don't get a sense of aronofsky yeah. from jaws well yeah because there's I, I probably man i hate to say this but like there's definitely more artistic experimentation behind this movie yeah even, that, even, yeah, yeah, yeah that's what i'm yeah well, it, well yeah but but that's not to say that jaws didn't have that it's just uh, jaws i guess was more of a commercial film like it was it looks more commercial there's definitely a bigger budget um well i, I guess what i'm getting at is he didn't experiment as much yeah maybe it's more thought out yeah but there's also just the tone it was of, also Jaws was way over budget and went to shoot way longer, <laughs> yeah. didn't it? But, okay, the one thing I keep thinking of is that this is like an adrenaline-fueled movie where it doesn't really let up. It's not stopping. Jaws is like one of those movies that is like a roller coaster ride. It goes, yeah, that's up, a, well, goes up, goes down. I mean, this movie, I guess you could say, is the same way, but it's, it's frenetically paced. There's not much time to build suspense because every time you turn around, the fucking truck's there. Uh, well, in Jaws, you also have that that time set to get the body count <laughs> right yeah yeah but it's just more of a story with jaws you know i mean and the whole thing about you see richard matheson wrote this and even he said that he was getting tired of writing the same man versus thing story like because richard matheson the reason why he quit writing short stories he actually said this he said i was getting tired of writing man versus himself man versus uh nature or man versus monster you know there's only so many, many things you can write about but yeah here comes the uh the duel is this the final is this the finale yeah, is. the the one shot that they shot with seven cameras yeah yeah this is like the yeah i don't it's i guess whenever it goes over yeah right here yeah and see like the shot of the truck going over the cliff was shot with a uh, very minimal, a uh, very, uh, I'm sorry, I'm getting caught up in this shit. This was done with a uh, very, very few cameras. If I, if I remember correctly. Yeah. They did it. One take with seven cameras is what I read. Okay. Yeah. One, that's right. One take they got, I mean, clearly they, they had to right here. They've only used one camera so far. Yeah. I wonder if that was the best shot. Now, there is a cool part coming up here that they did not plan. See how the truck is going over? Mm -hmm. And uh, the the cinematographer kind of gets lost for a second, for like a split second. And then out of the, the debris and the smoke or whatever, the dust, you see the goddamn tire poke out. 
mm-hmm. and like it was uh, completely not planned that way. But right, he lost it in the debris, but yeah, it worked. I th- it's my, he it was might, still with it. It might be right here. Yeah. Uh, let's see, it's coming up. It oh, gets, you meant a different tire? I I was fascinated. He lost the 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 tr- the front of the truck and car. And it just so happened that it came out on that. It was hard to keep up with. I mean, clearly we're seeing that. Oh, every dude, day. yeah. It, 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 it was engulfed in that. Yeah, I mean, it was slow-mo for us. But you imagine shooting that shit. It would have been hard. But now, a minute also, ago. You, hang on. You mentioned earlier. I'm sorry. I was already cut you off. But you mentioned earlier. You said that sound that the truck made was from the creature from the Black Lagoon. Okay. But I, I yeah, want to say wait, that's, that's wrong because... Uh, we well, might, you said another universal. You said another. Monster. It was a dinosaur movie. It was from like the land unknown, I think, if memory serves. Yeah. Well. But he used that same. People know this shit. But he used that same sound in Jaws when the shark died. But uh, I don't know. Might need to double check me on that. It did say no. It did say the same thing I read said it was used in Jaws too. Well, no, but you, the the movie that they pulled. Oh it yeah. From. Well, I don't really care. I would take your advice over that, anyways. <laughs> You're my Matt Penfield of the movies. <laughs> yeah. Believe me over the internet, Chad. But no, I think I remember hearing that from Spielberg in, in the documentary on this movie. It seemed like Spielberg said Is that. Is there a documentary on this? Bl- Is this Blu-ray or, it, there's a, it, or Yeah, DVD? it's a short documentary. It's like a little 15-minute thing I think they put together. I was actually surprised Spielberg wanted to talk about this movie, but I think he's still kind of in love with it. I mean... Was there's, one there, there's a lot of experimentation, yeah, and it has a it has a frantic pace. It does, it does, and it it's, makes you feel frantic. It yeah. gives you anxiety. It does because you really feel for this dude. Like I felt fucking bad for him. You know, when I first saw this movie, I was, I was like, dude, like he, he's he didn't ask for any of this shit. You know, I mean, he's just a you know he's a kind of a pussy whipped guy and. But it's almost like he he didn't ask for it, but he needed it. Because now he can kind of go home and tell his wife how the cow eats the corn. Uh, but that this shot right here, that's fucking beautiful. This little, that's cool. Kind of reminds me of an old western. But uh, yeah, this ends a lot like The Hitcher. But, um, but I mean, The Hitcher, you know, obviously, like we talked about earlier, came after this movie, so... Um, so uh, now when the truck driver was pushing the car did he I thought he was trying to put a detach from it or did he just shift it and just go harder off the cliff I don't know I, I, I know what you're talking about because it goes I thought he was trying to like push it off and then he was going to put it back in reverse maybe and break but it's off. almost like he was downshifting or something see I, I, I did I was I got confused because I'm also like about oh 15 minutes ago the weed hit me and i think i think i said i think my brain just floated or something but like probably i gotta talk about carrie lofton real quick the truck driver he not only played the truck driver in this movie but he also was a a stuntman who did i think his last movie was that black dog movie with um swayze and meatloaf did you ever see that movie oh that's another truck movie yeah Yeah. it's got a fucking Monster yeah, I kind of forgot about that, but yeah, I know what you're talking about. It's been a long time. Yeah, he did. He was a he was known for like his stunt trucking skills, uh, if that makes any sense. He was a he was a stunt truck driver, but he uh, he did some shit for Maximum Overdrive too. But apparently, he was just a fucking stuntman veteran. Been around since or he was born like pretty much when film was invented. But um, yeah, that was uh, that was dual, and uh, we're gonna go into our review part of this uh podcast and we're gonna kind of uh just come all over this movie some more and as if we haven't been i I, I think i could probably i'm i'm starting to zone out on uh okay (laughs) so my brain's froze okay so (laughs) do you you want me to go first yeah go first i can't (laughs) i can't wrangle a thought (laughs) yeah well okay and i didn't really talk much about the writing of the movie uh because I mean, I don't know why I didn't. Because really, there's only so much you can say about the writing. I do like the way Richard Matheson tells his stories. Like, he's more... 
he's more like I was saying earlier, he writes simple narratives like man against beast, man against monster, man against himself, man against nature, um, man against man. And he came up with this story. I may have already mentioned this, but he came up with this story um, the day that John F. Kennedy was assassinated. And I, I feel like you're That's looking, weird. I feel like you're looking at me weird. <laughs> but, Dude, but, I, I'm trying to hold my how, head up. How high are you? <laughs> but, Dude, I don't know. But yeah, I can only imagine. Because <laughs> I can't. But, my head um, weighs a lot. <laughs> yeah. But uh, the script seems like it would be really sparse. It seems like this script would only be like 10 pages because the whole thing would be nothing but action scenes. Yeah. Truck driver chases man, you know, but, um, but I love Richard Matheson. I love the writing. Um, it's not much I can say about the writing, but, uh, the directing, I mean, we clearly, yeah. we blew our fucking load yeah, talking I, about I, the directing. It made we, me fall in love with Spielberg again. I kind of like, okay. did you kind of lose? No, like a, I've always, well, I've all. Spielberg always makes good movies. You should never lose your love for Spielberg. Well, see, I bet I would like that Bridge of Spies. But it's, it's, it's probably his <laughs> uh, most commercial I thing. I, I bet he's... Know. If the story's any good, it's gonna, like... I actually thought I was gonna like... I, to be honest, I didn't finish it. But what I saw, it was kind of a piece of shit. But it was written by the Coen brothers, or Co... <laughs> You're looking at me funny, man. <laughs> you, you just said you just said it was written by the Coke by the Cohen brothers. No, you no. know, you said it was written by the Coke. <laughs> well, I thought, yeah, I thought you. Brought, dude, uh, you I, dude, he said the Coke brothers. <laughs> that's what it sounded like. You said, dude. But uh, 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 <laughs> can I can I just say that I give this movie five popcorn kernels and we just leave it at that? Do I need some shades? <laughs> I mean, like you're staring through my soul, man. Dude, no, I, I don't even. I, I feel like we're tripping over. Dude, I'm, I'm just trying to gather a thought. Yeah. Okay. Well. Okay. So you're writing. Uh. Well, okay. What? Well, give there's it? not Did much. Uh, not much I can say about the writing, I, but I do love Richard Matheson. He's like one of my favorite fucking writers. Um, Here, I'm gonna look this oh, way. Dude, he also wrote. Uh, <laughs> he also wrote. Uh, what is, what is that movie? Um, uh, House on Haunted Hill. Oh really? That's no 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 no. Um, God, it's called. Don't fail me. I've already no, called no, you okay. a Penfield of movies. Yeah, it's called The Legend of Hell House. If you haven't seen that movie, Richard House Matheson wrote House. that, and that is a fucking bomb ass movie. <laughs> but uh, okay, so the writing is good. Directing is fucking great. Uh, we've covered that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, the acting. Dennis Weaver, fucking great. He was in Touch of Evil. If you I was got, a little if, worried. If, if, about, I, at the beginning, I was a little worried. Him, yeah. Probably thought it was going to be like kind of that subpar TV acting. Uh, well, I, don't, I wouldn't say that. I, I, I don't know. I well, just, like I said, he was... I didn't think he... I, I didn't know if he had it in him. Well, he dominated TV back in the day, but he was clearly made for features. You know, like I said, I wish he would have expanded more into features, but, um, you know, the, well, that's neither here nor there. Well, but, dude, his acting is good in this, but you also got to think that Spielberg's shots made his acting even better. It could have enhanced it, yeah. Oh, dude, I think, I'm not going to say that the dude's a bad actor, but it made him shine even more. Probably, yeah. With Spielberg at the helm, he could bring out performances, I think. Like, you know how the, like, and that's a good point, actually, because, you know, the kid from uh, E.T., he didn't really go on to do anything. I mean, he went on to do more movies, but, like, but what's the first thing you think of when you think of that kid? You think of E.T. Like, even if you see him in anything else, you're like, eh, that's the kid from E.T. Because he didn't, any other movie he ever did, which was never as big as E.T., but it, his also his performance just kind of sucked. Did he do? I don't yeah, know. I mean, if well, I exactly. Right you don't. You can't remember. Um, oh, he did some movie like what was it Frog Dreaming or something? I maybe he wasn't the maybe son in uh, Roseanne, was he? No, <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> really? No, he wasn't DJ. Was it? Uh, <laughs> was the, is that? Is that? Yeah. Not um, him? No, but um, dang, I th- always thought it was. <laughs> He really he started acting in some Stephen King shit when he got up older. But anyway, it's just like you 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 think of that kid and you're like, Spielberg really brought out something in that kid because I don't think he went on to do another Spielberg movie. But when you go back, you can look it up on YouTube. There's like footage of that kid doing an audition for E.T. and even Drew Barrymore, you know, did a great mm-hmm. job. 
but like uh, that kid like fucking cries and shit and it's like what it what is spielberg doing to bring out this magic in these fucking people like oh he's whipping them <laughs> yeah i mean yeah, or or fucking them i don't know like he's doing something dude he, he is bringing out like the all these emotions and and i'm just like man he's like a fucking magician and i uh, think he probably just gives them candy yeah yeah he's real he's real family oriented really good with kids supposedly um you know. What about E.T., though? Shot c- composition-wise, it's, like, no way compared to this. To me, it's more like Jaws. Right. More of a commercial style. Yeah. Yeah. It's still artistic, but it's just not as... Uh, I think what you were getting caught up in was, was the rapid cutting, the frenetic the, pace. The, the angles. Well, dude... It, well, it, was, the, it was anxiety-inducing, yeah, too. Well, I mean, it, well, the angles and, and were, how close they were on the guy's face, it helped betray his sense of... I don't know because when danger, you think of any element well, of danger, well, if you're really that anxious or in a uh, having anxiety or in an intense situation like that, yeah, uh, it in real life it it seems like life gets distorted like that. Yeah, yeah. But well, I mean, also uh, you know, just think about somebody just being on your ass, just a regular car being mm-hmm. on your ass. That is bad enough, you know. Get your nerves kind of jingled. But think about if you had a fucking big rig like that on your ass. You'd mm. really be flipping out like this dude. And to think they shot this in the amount of days. That's really impressive. Yeah. Because I think the, what was the original schedule was supposed to be like 10. That's what it And said. then it went on to like 16. You know. Yeah. But dude. I, like I said. I couldn't even shoot one fucking sequence in 10 days. You know. But. Um, uh, but I, I. Dude. Five popcorn kernels for this movie. I don't know how you feel about it, but we'll go. If you can talk, we'll move on to your uh, review. Uh, I give it four. Four out of five. Um, yeah, I hate the music. You son of a bitch! You gave and, and, you, and, and, no, and the, if I can just say this really quick, you asshole! You gave nine seven six evil <laughs> a five, yeah. but you're gonna give a legendary movie like the first fucking movie. From Spielberg, a four, because you didn't like the fucking music. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Well, yeah, but I, I, you better take it back. Nine seven six evil is 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 on a a, a different curve. You can't rate a that curve. again. You can't rate a nine seven six evil against a Spielberg. You have to rate a Spielberg against. I think you were just super fucked up that night. No, <laughs> no. But anyway, you were no, like, I'm feeling good. No, Five. I hated the 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 man. The one time you enter music, it tinkles, and then <laughs> when the music worked for the scene, they were copying like the psycho thing. I mean, I agree with you on the music. It's thing. the weakest part. I the, can't give it a five for it. Well, yeah, but that hurts the grade. Like, yeah, man, it's a, everybody's in on the project. You don't even give it a fucking A for effort. You're just like, <laughs> you're just like. I would have rather them not used any. You just like Billy. Your project was good, but your little trinkle music shit. Like, I just got and copying. I got to give you a B. You're copying. You're, you're giving this movie a B, basically. <laughs> A whole popcorn kernel. You can't. Yeah, even, and you I can't even like shave a half of it. Should have hired fucking Freddy Krueger to direct it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we are deep in the shit here, folks. But anyways, yeah, I but, give it a four. Okay, well we'll leave it at that. And uh, yeah, there's really not much else we can say about this movie other than go fucking watch it. Yeah. I mean, like and subscribe. Yeah, please stab you, the like it, button, folks. If you stab finally it. make it this far, <laughs> share it. Yes, please. Yeah, make it all the way through our episodes because we're, you know, I mean, this is where the good part is. Like, even if you have to fast forward to the end of the episode, like yeah. Uh, yeah. this is where we, you know, talk the most shit. Yeah. But I have no shit to talk about this movie. You know, even a four. I was giving you shit for giving it a four. That's fair. I mean, this clearly is not as good as Jaws. Uh, but I, I still, I, dude, I like it. I like it. I would say almost just as good. Don't say that. Yeah. Dude, because this is more artistic. <laughs> yeah. Well, to an extent. Shot selection and things like that. I feel like we're going to have to watch Jaws. We're going to have to uh, do a uh, episode me, for Jaws that one. Jaws is like watching E.T. <laughs> <laughs> and E.T. was pretty scary as a kid. It, it, it was. It was, dude. For like Fucking... the first half. I watched it recently and I kind of got scared yeah, and like, I don't dude, like I got shit. emotional watching ET man. Like that shit at the end, I was like, man, I fucking the you know the waterworks just 
fucking started pouring. But, you know, that's what happens but, when you get old and emotional and gay. Yeah. But, um, anyway. Signing off. Yeah, this has been Popcorn on the Macabre, folks. And we'll see you guys on the next film.